all Palestinians are scum and deserve to die. Think about those words. Think about those words in that order. Think about those words in that order and how strong they are. And you'll understand why, even though it's been six years since I last heard them, they are still seared into my memory. I was a first year law student at an Orthodox Jewish law school in New York, Toro Law Center. Now, in case you can't tell, I'm not Orthodox Jewish. I was uh, walking around one day and I saw an event. It was about the state of Israel and it was being led by a Jewish student. Now I was fresh out of college, so I was purposefully ignorant to what was going on in Gaza. Now, I had enough of my own problems. I had homework, student loans, girls, problems. Uh, so I didn't really pay attention to what was going on over there. But now I was in an institute for higher education. I needed to mature, I needed to grow up and learn about the world. So I decided to go there to learn and to see things from a different perspective. And that might surprise people. And unsurprisingly, when I got there and after the event, it erupted into just emotions flying, debates, people calling each other names. And through the discord and din, there was a cracking of a whip when I heard a fellow 1L, a fellow first year law student say, all Palestinians are scum and deserve to die. Now, if you've seen the movie Inception, you know that a lot of things can happen at the speed of thought in a very short amount of time. So as I looked over at him, a lot of things were going through my brain. I thought I could say something to him. I could debate him. I could reach over and just punch him in the face. I mean, after all, it is Mike Tyson who said, everyone has a plan in life until they get punched in the face. But I thought, that hasn't worked for the last 70 years in Gaza. It's not going to work now. So I thought about another quote, this one by a scholar and a Khalifa of Islam, Mirza Tahir Ahmed, who said, swords can win territories, but not hearts. Force can bend heads, but not minds. So instead of getting mad at this guy, I got to work. With a handful of other Muslim law students, we created the Muslim Law Student Association. Now, a few of our colleagues thought, you know, guys, this is a Jewish school. Do you really want to have a Muslim group here? Knowing the stereotype, that's not something you should really be doing. And we said, sure, why not? When I was in an undergrad uh, at Albright College, I was one of the most active members of the Jewish student organization, Hillel. And I was an active participant with the Christian fellowship in dialogues and debates. And we were always able to walk away from this as friends. So why stop that now? And I don't want to paint a picture that Toro Law was against this. In fact, the school and the staff were more supportive than I'd ever seen anything. And in fact, the associate dean, who's a Jewish person, agreed immediately to be our advisor. So this is how we were able to find support from one of the most unlikely places because of what we were passionate about. So we got to work. We had Islam 101 programs to show people what Islam is really about. And these were essentially come meet a Muslim programs. Now as Pew recently reported, 60% of Americans don't know a Muslim. 60%. And you might be thinking, why does this matter? You know, why does Pew have these research studies? Why are they putting so much money into this? Well, I'll tell you why. It's because Islam in the past 10 years has become a headline for hardliners. Whether it's political or religious extremists, it has become a headline for hardliners. And we know we can't believe everything we see in the media, so we as an educated population want to research this a little bit more. We want to study what is this, what's, what is this religion? What is really going on here? That's why it matters. And it also matters because as a people, we are all unique, just like everybody else. So we have to be able to realize that there is going to be a time when we, with our individual characteristics, are likely going to be the only person who likes some sort of sport, likes some sort of idea, or supports some sort of group that another person might ever meet. You know, we are ambassadors for what we like. And we have to put the best foot forward 
when we meet other people. So it was likely, if 60% of Americans don't know a Muslim, it's likely that these people at Toro Law or anywhere else, I could be the only Muslim that they would ever meet. So what I would have to put my best foot forward. So we did. We had these programs, and we didn't just want to talk about the faith. We wanted people to understand Muslims, that we are just normal people. So one of the ways we did that was we showed this stand-up comedy film. It's called Access of Evil. Uh, it's a comedy tour that was huge on Comedy Central. And it's full of uh, Arab comedians and Muslim comedians who are just you know, having their stand-up shows. And uh, after we showed that, there was a Jewish student who said, wow, I had no idea Muslims could be so funny. So that was one barrier that we had broken. And we found support in a very unlikely place. And that was my first time watching that. And I developed a, a man crush on Dino Badala, who is one of the comedians in there. And I really appreciated his wit and his jokes. And one day, after I was performing in uh, New York City, I, I went outside the comedy club just to get some air. And Dino Badala walked right by me. And I forgot his name until he was like 20 feet away. And I'm like, Dean! And he turned around, and we had a talk for like 10 to 15 minutes just there on the street. And he was such a modest guy, which meant my man crush went even bigger for him. And we, in our correspondences, in our communications, I was able to find out that he has this show that he does with a Jewish comedian, Scott Blakeman. It's called Stand Up for Peace. So it shows that Palestinians and Jews can come together and achieve some sort of peaceful solution. So I wanted him to come to my law school. It was going to be pretty hard to get a Palestinian uh, to a Jewish institution. So over the next uh, year and a year and a half, uh, we had more programming. We talked about hot topic issues like the Ground Zero mosque that was happening in New York City. We talked about the Fort Hood shooting and whether Muslims can even serve in the army. And we reached out to the whole community. And we got so much support that in our third year, we got a lot of law groups together. We had conservative law groups. We had ethnic law groups. We had the Jewish Law Student Association co-sponsor the Stand Up for Peace event, where a Palestinian and a Jewish comedian came to our law school to give this great message. It was a sold out show. There was standing room only. And the, they killed it. It was great. It was so great that one of my Jewish friends came up to me and he said, Salam, this was so great. The only problem I have is that the Palestinian comedian was funnier. <laughs> I said, I'll take it. You know, I'll take it if that's what it's going to take. So that's another barrier we broke. Now, this was in our third year, and it's time to graduate. And it's time to give out some awards. So the student body gets to you know, elect uh, something, or who gets what. And they gave me the honor of this award for promoting tolerance and harmony uh, in the school. And I was very touched by this. And they even awarded me the class orator position for graduation, uh, which, was, which was a huge deal. A Muslim student speaking as the class speaker at a Jewish law school. Now, I'm not saying this to stroke my ego. I'm a very humble guy. I'm the most humble guy you know. <laughs> I want to talk about this on a bigger, on a world view. Like, look what happened. Look what this society was able to do. Which gives me hope for what we as a community, as a nation, can do in the future. But those accolades aside, what really, what really hurt, what really helped, uh, took my heart, was that student who had said the scum statement. In our third year, he came up to me and he said, Salam, what I said in my first year, I regret. I'm really sorry about that. And I hope that there's a peaceful solution to that whole mess. And think about those words. Think about those words in that order. Think about those words in that order and how strong they are. And you'll realize why even though it's been years since I last heard them, they are still seared into my memory. It took me three years to win his heart. And it wasn't through fighting. It wasn't through debates. It was through actions. It was through dialogues. It was through helping each other out on law assignments late in the night. And because of this passion that I had, I didn't graduate magna cum laude. I didn't graduate cum laude. I graduated thank you laude. 
but this made it all worth it. And I hope that you take your passions and I hope that you take them and you show them and you share them with everybody because you will be so surprised where you'll find support. And you'll find support in the most unlikely of places. Thank you.